Hello, and welcome to this brief introduction to Event Action Program Design. So what is this? It's a method of easily specifying the behavior of a digital machine control. That means using this technique, you can very easily sort through the rather sometimes complex and convoluted sequences that have to take place, and you can sort out how the system is, is meant to respond uh, to various events at different times. A typical event action program for a machine takes in events from the outside world. It massages this according to a certain set of rules and as an output it produces certain actions that influence the behavior of the machine in turn. So for every external event, the program has to generate an appropriate action. And it's the program definition or specification that tells us what action is to be performed in response to each possible event, which may in fact also depend on the past history of the system. Let me give you an example. A simple system where we fill a tank with some fluid, heat it up to a certain temperature, and then drain it back out again. So this consist system will consist mechanically of a tank, a heater to heat the water. The, the water. I'm going to pretend that it's milk in fact in a dairy. So we've got a heater. We have a temperature sensor to detect when it gets up to temperature. We have a pump for filling. We have a drain valve for emptying it. We have two float switches, one to detect when the tank is full and one to detect when the tank is empty. And we have a push button for the operator to start the process off and perhaps do other things with. So we need to now define or somehow describe how the program is going to take the inputs from those sensors, the, the float switches, etc., and control the, the pump, the valve, and the, and the um, heater in turn. So we look upon this as, as the inputs to the program being the, the signals generated by the button, the temperature sensor, the full switch, and the empty switch. And the outputs of the program are the signals that drive the pump, the heater, and the valve. Now one view of these inputs and outputs is that the inputs are the things that generate events. And remember, the program can't really control directly these events. They're just going to happen and the outputs are the things which the program can control and in fact must produce in the appropriate way and these are what we call the actions. So what we're going to do with event action program design is define the program behavior in a very easily understood table format. Now the tool that we have for doing this is called Tabula, been developed here at SPLAT Controls um, over a number of years based on a lot of experience um, in doing this kind of programming. This is what the tabular screen looks like. And at first blush, it looks quite like a, a conventional Excel spreadsheet. Now, the tabular screen is divided into a number of regions. The pink columns here are where we represent the events that I discussed earlier. These are the inputs into the system, and they are just going to happen when they happen. The green cells here are where we um, enter the actions that are to be taken and to describe the actions and finally each column represents one state of the system. Now a state of the system is equivalent in, in the case of our, our heat and, and dump vat uh, to each of the fa phases of the operation filling, uh, heating, draining etc. So remember, this is at this stage we're talking about defining the system's behavior. We're not actually writing a program, although Tabula, in fact, can give a great deal of assistance in writing the program as well. I'm going to start off here by naming the states. The first state is the idle state. This is the where the system initially starts off. So I'm just going to call it idle, like that. The next state after idle is where we are filling the the tank, so I'll call that filling, like so. The third state is heating, because this is where we're going to be turning on the heater and waiting for it to get to temperature. And the final state is draining. So now the transition from each, from each of these states to the next one is triggered by an external event. So let me fill in the events we have. 
The first event is the button press. This is what gets the whole process going. The second event is the tank full. This is what's going to happen after we've opened the, it's turned on the pump and um, pumped milk into the tank. The next thing that will happen is um, temperature greater than the set point. And the final thing when we're draining the tank is that the tank is going to be empty again. Tank empty, like so. So here we have the four possible events that can take place in the life and times of this system and the four states that it can be in. So now I'm going to, the next thing I'm going to do is actually define the transitions from one state to another. So imagine that the machine is sitting here in the idle state and what are we expecting to happen? We're expecting the operator to press the button. And when the operator presses the button, we want to go over to the filling state. So I'm going to just simply type in that cell there, the number, number two, which is state number two here, the filling state. So what this says is when we're in the idle state and the button is pressed, we go over to state two filling. When we're in filling, the next thing that's going to happen that's of interest is the tank is going to be full. So in that cell here that intersects the filling state and the tank full event, we put a transition to state three, which is heating. When we're heating and we get to the temperature greater than the set point, we go to state four. And in state four, we're draining the, the tank. And when the tank is empty, we're going to sta go to state one. And we have completed the cycle. Now, all that remains is to fill in the, uh, the actual actions that are going to be take taking place. I will start off with state two, which makes it a little bit easier. When the button is pressed, we want to go to the filling state. So what we need to do is turn, is, uh, turn on the pump. So I'll write pump on. When we get to the tank full condition, we switch to the heating state, which means that we need to turn on the heater. But we don't want the tank to overflow, so we will also turn the pump off, like so. When we've kicked up to temperature here, we switch to drain, draining state, state four. So what we're going to do there is we're going to turn the heater off. Oopsie. And we are going to open the valve. Like so. And finally, when we get the tank empty signal or the tank empty event, we're going to switch back to idle, where it would be a good idea to close the valve again. So there you have it. There's a, a nice, complete, unambiguous description of each of the things that has to take place uh, for this control to provide the basic function. The user presses the button in the idle state. We turn the pump on and sit in the filling state. When the tank is full, we switch to the heating state, where we turn the heater on and turn the pump off. Um, and when the temperature gets to the set point, we then switch to the, from the heating state to the draining state. Where we turn off the heater, open the valve, and sit waiting for the tank to get empty. When the tank is empty, we switch back to the idle state again. That is the complete sequence. Very simple. Just about anyone could read that with just a brief explanation, for example, watching this little video clip, and they will get the general idea. Now, let's just start adding a couple of little bells and whistles here. Supposing I want to be able to abort the operation at any time by another button press. So, what I will say now is if during filling the button is pressed, I now want to go and switch over to state 4. And what I'm now going to do in state four is I'm going to drain the tank again. Now, because I get to state four now from this state here with the pump is on, it's probably a jolly good idea at this point to turn the pump off as well. And you can see that the logic of turning the pump off is fairly obvious because I came from a state where the pump is on 
I've done some unusual action here. I've gone out of the normal cycle and I've gone over here and I actually want to start draining the tank so it's a good idea to turn the pump off. And similarly in state 3 if the button is pressed again I want to go to state 4 turn the heater off which is happening make sure the pump is off or it's, it's well and truly off and open the drain valve. So now you see one of these instances of the response to the button actually depends on whereabouts we are in the cycle. It depends on the, sta on the state of the system. If the state is idle the button is causes us to go and start filling. If the system is not idle, it's already filling or heating, then the pushing the button is going to do something quite different. It's going to cause us to go over and drain the tank again. So you can see that the, the response is context dependent. Now what we do, in the, particularly in these circumstances here in, in button press in state 2 or button press in state 3, is a design decision. It's not something that follows from absolute logic that anyone could work out. It really is, it requires somebody who has a good understanding of what the machine does and how it's being used to be able to make that kind of decision. And that happens very often in these sorts of design designs that we have to make value judgments as to what's going on. The usefulness of this tabular tool is that it allows us to set it out in a very clear and unambiguous fashion um, and and know what it's all about. Now, Tabula goes a bit further than that even because I can go and simulate the operation of this um, this system using Tabula. If I right click on that idle heading there and set that as current state, it gets highlighted. Now I'm going to hold down the shift key. You can't see it, but trust me, I'm holding the shift key down. And as I pass over these possible events, when I get to an event that can actually do something in that state, it highlights the transition cell there in yellow and it puts a little blue blob in the target state. If I now go ahead and click the mouse, it will actually perform the transition. And at the same time, it's now telling me that if the button is pressed again, it's going to switch over to state 4 and drain the tank. However, if I wait until the tank gets full, and I, it, it will then switch over to heating at the moment that tank full event occurs, like that. Once I'm in heating, I can either abort it by pushing the button again, or I can wait for the temperature to get up to, to its set point, at which stage it will click over to the draining state. In the draining state, uh, it's going to wait until the tank is empty, none of the other things comes into it there, and then it's going to switch back to idle. And so I'm able to simulate the transitions um, just using tabula. So it, I can get a very good feel for what's going on. So you can see tabula is useful not only for initially specifying but also for playing what-if games um, and testing various sets of circumstances. It comes with a wide range of tools. Uh, what I'm showing you here is merely the design slash specification stage of tabula also, but however, if you're programming with a splat controller, it's capable of giving you a very good, let me say, 80 to 90 percent leg up in actually just generating the program code as well. All you have to do is put in little program segments to correspond to each of these um, events, the tests of the switches basically in this case, and the instructions that will result in the valve being closed, the pump being turned on, the heater being turned on, and so on. Um, each of those instructions and it will then automatically generate a program. So head on over to our website splatco.com, follow the links under downloads and you will see Tabula and you can download your own copy of Tabula to play with. Um, it's completely free, you can use it for commercial or non-commercial purposes, we, we don't particularly mind. We'd love you of course to be using it to program a Splat controller but it will still give you quite a lot of um, useful assistance just in designing and specifying uh, and thinking about these uh, event action programs uh, for other programming paradigms as well. So, with, thank you for your time.